Greetings, Marshier, and welcome to episode 381 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to get Deuterium Power up and running, as well as do a massive expansion to our oil processing setup. Enjoy. And that means doing a new setup again. Let's just uh, drop it in here for now. We need to make the Deuterium Reactor here. And how many of them do we want? Well, we're collecting 10 of the other reactor types, so we'll do 10 of that one as well. And some enormous numbers in here. I don't think they need to be that big. And there we go. Made the heat pipe 4 request. That'll eventually get its items. Uh-oh. It's already running. Wasn't thinking about that. Oh, well. <laughs> They're not running anymore. We gotta go through here. Setting everything over. And we'll plop the reactors in there. There we go. One advantage of the deuterium reactors is they go up to 1500 degrees. So they have a little more flexibility than the other types. So our on conditions need to reflect that. Having less than 50 fuel before a swing is still a good condition. Now we'd probably want to do like less than 1250 of reactor temperature to get a swing. And of course the fuel being available and also the status of the accumulators. And this is an interesting choice. We essentially always want it to be on, but how about let's go with 80 for now. Let's pop a new line in again, doing hell mod. We can be by factory. We have four reactors in a group of four, which is gonna be 1.1 gigawatts. Because of hell mod reasons, this doesn't link. Let's just go with 48. It's not enough this time. So we'll go with 60. And then we need to make electricity from Steam Turbine 3. It doesn't link, but it's probably double at 120. So there's the ratio. Where we have 48, so we need to add an extra 6 on each side. And this means we have to invert the sides we put these ducts on. We'll have to manually wire everything in, but that should be the total number here. 120 with 60. So this seems pretty good, and the digit displays are correct, where we're going to have that immense amount of megajoules, which needs all of those digits. So that seems good. And as far as where to put it, well, we're kind of running out of space in the factory here. We're just, uh, we're basically reclaiming land when we can. So the robots are filling in the zones here. We'll see if there's any empty spots. Of course there are. So the way that these reactors are going to work is that they're essentially always going to be online. Because this fuel value is so high, we have no hope of not wasting it by turning the reactor on and off or even turning the fuel on and off. That really the best way to not waste it is just to have it run 24 seven and assume that will be the case. So the way that we do that is just not have too many reactors. Our energy consumption goes up and down. It kind of depends on how uh, smoothed out the production is of science packs. And we're not quite at 50 gigawatts because we're short on that oil. But clearly if we had say 10 gigawatts of deuterium reactors, that would be very reliable and they would never overheat. Also when the factory was dormant, they probably wouldn't be overpowered, but they also have that logic to turn off if the factory is dormant. So we're probably not going to make too many of these, but the amount of them that we make is dependent on how many fuel cells we have. Does this have any hope of lining up with the existing pipes? Probably not, because it would be here, and then it's way bigger. Nonetheless, let's plop it in here, and it can always be connected to the network because it's always going to be on. And it's going to be annoying, but we'll just turn the water ducts to keep these lined up as long as we can. <laughs> it's like I'm always worried where we're standing, but we'd probably survive an impact just fine, but I don't want to test that. So we'll need to have a signal transmitter here to say when the reactor is on and also have that as a part of our increasing mess of signals in here. So it's a lot of work for our deuterium and we only have one group of reactors to show for it right now, but that's fine. Let's see, do we have everything we need? Well, we're getting the signal, so probably that the next thing we're waiting on is the request. And let's request the 10. It's probably too much. It's also quite stable, and that's what the rest of the reactors are running on. 
and uh, they're not being sent because we have a filter here requesting fuel cells, but we can just put a passive provider in there instead. That will still be included in the network. It's specifically the requesters that are not. Yeah, so let's just remove these requests for now. Interesting, the description of the reactor has not been updated. Uses uranium and plutonium fuel cells to generate heat. Not anymore. Okay, well, we got some in there and some there as well, but yeah, the fourth one is just not getting any yet because it's still waiting on its fuel cell here. Although we are actually getting one delivered here, so we will have enough to test this. There we go. We have four on signals, which means with the flip of the switch, we'll have the last on signal. And we can see how this works. And 80,000 megajoules in here. It's pretty insane. And we have our deuterium fuel cell indicator here, saying that it is online. And the muon count seems to be reducing, which means that we are actually creating enough deuterium for it. That ultimately, our setup is just not designed to make very much of it. Which is fine, we can use it when we can. Really, the problem is just putting it all into buffers in all of these fuel cells. So once we have fully seeded this reactor setup and any others, then we suddenly won't need those catalysts for anything anymore, because they'll almost last forever. So really, the limiting factor here is simply how fast can we build more reactors. And in total, these four will create about a gigawatt. It's actually kind of insane that one reactor setup will create a gigawatt. But compared to our factory's total consumption, it barely even registers. And because the max temperature is so high on these, that they essentially go twice as hot as they need to in order for these to run. And actually, because of that, we probably only need the temperature to be around a thousand. Not that that'll matter much, but there we go. We're starting to create power. We're waiting for the temperature in the back, which is this last number, to go above 765, which means we are at maximum temperature for all of the turbines, and these lights will turn off telling us the same thing. It takes quite a while for that last one to get its heat. Another thing we're checking for is to make sure that the reactors do not hit maximum temperature. It's kind of nuts that we're only a quarter away through the fuel. So we'll just let that run. There is one other aspect of it we need to handle, and that's getting rid of the used fuel cells. And if we could pipe it in to the same belt as everything else, then that would be relatively clean. Doing it with a belt like this is probably less clean, but it still works. So what we need to do is just put it into a centrifuge. It's going to give us the muons back and some slag, and that's it. It's a very clean process overall. Since we seem to be getting by fine on just the one machine, I guess that means we can just get rid of these other ones. And actually that simplifies this a little bit. And I guess we'll put the speed modules in there because who knows how fast it needs to operate. It's actually 800 second crafting time, so <laughs> it's substantial. And we could sit here and wait for the fuel cells, but <laughs> we're going to be here a while if we are. And the rest of that landfill was placed. I always like to keep them busy because doing stuff like landfill takes forever. Plus the making of landfill creates tons of salt, which we need for our rockets, so it's not a terrible idea to just keep expanding. And of course, having more accumulators is nice too, and <laughs> I kind of want to have even more, because what are we up to? 2.6 terajoules, and uh, fighting on Biter Island would probably be a good test of our power armor, but for now, Let's just keep expanding, maybe to right here or so. And that's plenty of work for robots. And that's uh, running hard. I have no idea how many reactors we'll be able to support. I guess it just depends on how fast we pump out the deuterium. Because this setup was designed to be easy and in a straight line and not necessarily min-maxed to make the maximum amount of deuterium. But it's also not that important because I just think this is going to be a supplementary power source and not a constant one, but we certainly could find some area of the factory to just put a ton of these. We did have a mighty oil build to do. Where would we want to put it? Well, we actually have 
even though there's a mess of pipes here, a pretty big area right in here we can use. Let's assume the input is going to come from the right. So that's going to create quite a bit of oil residuals there. But that's the basic part of it. Let's just follow this down the chain since it was fairly logical that we should be able to mirror that. So that's one byproduct taken care of. Now we need to handle the other two. And they're actually kind of related to each other. But let's switch these to this side. And the two setups are going to be identical. Just one does lubricant and one does the fuel oil. We also have to break the residual gas down, which requires two more refineries here. Let's just put them on the top since we can continue to use this nice straight line steam pipe. So let's walk it back a bit where in order to input the crude oil, we need to send it through the oil separator. And now we're at the situation where pipe input and outputs can potentially really matter here. But since the number's low, we probably can just do a pipe going in one side, pipe going in the other, and that'll get the job done. It's a swarm of landfill bots. Okay, and then this would just be the input from the drills, of which we would really need to have two pipes. So to make sure that's the case, let's just keep the two sides separate. And I suppose we can smush these in a little bit more. How about like that? So we need to handle the raw gas liquids, and sure, let's just go the other direction since we have room to go that way. And then we need to do the fractioning, but actually in this case, it'll be a one-to-one -one ratio. But the machines are huge. And then from here, most of these are just going to be sent on their way. And where would that be? It would be up. So we'll point them there for now. And let's uh, keep following this around and find the most relevant things. So we'll have a machine here with an overflow and an input of coke and an output of fuel block. And then they will otherwise connect with where they need to go. And how are we doing? I see we have more than 10 deuterium fuel cells on average. And yeah, that's about the case. And we're definitely consuming the catalyst faster than we can make them. So I think we're good here but our four used fuel cells made it. There's just not very many of them to deal with. We need another one to actually do the recipe, so I guess we'll wait a little bit longer. And it looks like this never really reaches maximum temperature, and the reason is because there's just nothing left, because at the very end, the temperature is exactly 765, because there's nothing left to raise the temperature any higher than that. So to make this number make sense, let's do seven basically 765. There we go. And we're about to finish up with that fuel cell, but let's keep working on our build for now. So the gases side is mostly complete. Let's just um, put it near the top here. So how about one right there, one right there. But we need the synthesis gas for the oil processing, so oops, not enough space here. We need to do an overflow in here because we need to always have some of that gas on hand for the oil processing. And we can hook it up from naphtha going the other direction, which gives us our two naphtha output pipes. We also need to handle the catalyst, and doing so is really easy when we've got this right in the middle. So now the naphtha is good, and the synthesis gas is good, so we need to supply the carbon monoxide. And I'm wondering if we're going to need buffer tanks in here or not but not having buffer tanks would be a much simpler way of doing it, so <laughs> let's see if we can make that work. How about let's put this down here with the top-up valve. It'll have the belt coming from somewhere with the carbon, and we can check this to make sure all the pipes are good. Okay, we're getting pretty close here, but now that I think about it, we have even more deuterium fuel cells building up, which means we should have enough Yep. To test this out. So it's a 800 second crafting time, but it's done pretty quickly when you have six speed module eights in there. And it pops out the muons. And we got all of them back. 
So then they'll just go where they need to. So I guess we'll let this number just go up for a while. And eventually we'll be able to place another one. By the way, how is this thing's size compared to where we would want to put it? Oh, it's just fine. We we'll might have to move all these pipes around though, but it'll fit. Now the steam pipe gets in there, so... Are we finally good? I think so. A lot of this stuff just uh, goes in and out of the logistics system. So let's grab it. 725,000 space science. I am kind of worried that by the time we get this upgraded, this research is going to be done because ultimately I think the research is happening faster than I was expecting it to. So I haven't been able to keep up with the factory upgrades. I mean, that's fine. It's not a bad problem to have. There we go. Pipes are a lot smoother than whatever that was before. But man, those pipes are still close. That's actually kind of annoying. There's really nowhere else to put this. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to put it here and sort of deal with it. Well, gold seems really short. We're low on the input, but then a lot of this isn't even running. Well, that explains it. Rubite is empty. Have we finally maxed out this rubite mine? Well, no, not really. It's just the belt is slow. <laughs> there it goes, so it was just barely too slow. And what in the world is going on here? I think I was trying to give it priority based on things that were using the acids for mining and things that weren't, but they're all acid mining now, so... It doesn't really matter. I mean, this thing is... <laughs> basically going at full blast. Okay, well... That's back. And everything else seems to be running, so... I guess we're fine. This seems like this was one of the stations that wasn't upgraded. With the fastest inserters. And yeah, I guess we can put another belt in here too, if we really wanted to. And we probably should. It's gonna be a zigzag belt. But we should try to max out this mine. And it's kind of funny, it's a tiny mine, but it's still going plenty fast. And one thing I'd like to fix is that our logic for the inserters, for deciding what to insert here, no longer applies for satellites. I mean, we can add the signal to this just fine. It won't break anything. So we don't really need that anymore. We can just take the signal directly from the network and it'll be less precise. But how about we control this inserter based on two conditions. One is just looking at this chest to say that there's less than 10. Gets a green square and this other one is looking at the status of our space science. So if we are less than 1 million output and there's a lot of stuff in there, but I'm trusting that the combinator will work. So this requires green is equal to 2. And I don't like it when it has all of those signals in there and you can't really see it. So let's pull it out. So now the input signal is our 734,000 and it's doing the green square. So this will create slightly too many satellites. But that's fine, it's space science, it doesn't really matter. We just don't want to create a significant amount more than our million. And based on how fast we're making it, and how fast these launches are going, it seems like we are going to get the space science before we're actually at the point of needing to use it. Which is fine. It just means that uh, rockets are done first. But it also kind of makes sense because we started launching rockets before we started upgrading the science. So it makes sense that one got done before the other. And as far as science output, well, believe it or not, we have actually caught up on the blue science. And the thing that's behind is now the purple. But I think what's happening is they're kind of ping-ponging back and forth with themselves about which one is falling behind. That if they were both going at full blast, we would not have enough naphtha. And also, we don't have enough plastic. We need to have two full belts of plastic coming in here. And right now we only have the one. I think our factory has the output capability of two, especially since we upgraded this train station to accept two, and now that we have this huge amount of butane gas for making plastic. But let's use some carefully placed substations to get everything covered. And now just gotta pipe it all in. 
Okay, hopefully everything is hooked up here. Man, that's a lot of drones just doing stuff. So that's the coke for getting rid of extra methane, which we probably will have. That's the carbon, which makes the carbon monoxide, which we're going to need. And we very well might have to put some tanks into here to smooth it out. We need to make the electrode request. There we go. Making the hydrogen. And that's getting all of that prepared. It takes very little time to fill up. Okay, I think we've got everything to figure out if this works. So, <laughs> everything immediately fires up. And we have our naphtha tank here. And these pumps are set to get it to 50,000 and then stop. And they're certainly doing that. And it's filled. So I guess it worked. That was very fast. And required basically no buffer tanks. Alright, we'll put some pressure pumps in here. And have a two-pipe system. And the way that works is every time we need to pull something out of it, we'll have another tank. With pumps going in and pumps going out. And we'll keep this going along. And same thing here. These all corners tanks are pretty nice. And now that we have two inputs coming in here, it is actually filling up on the naphtha now. Machines are a little glitchy. Now because they are short on their plastic bars, that this setup needs essentially a hundred of them, but they're used in two different places. 45 a second, which is essentially half a belt, are going into the biosilicate extract machine, which is right here, and it's actually getting a whole belt, so that's not an issue. The other amount is going into these machines, and it's 55 a second, but it's being split between two halves of two belts, which means it could get a total of 75, but this belt would need to be totally full, and it's totally not. That makes sense, because we only have the one of input, so now we need to find a second belt, Oh yeah, Naphtha basically filled up there, and now it's uh, filling up that tank. Well, this stopped though, which isn't something we'd want to see, so what is it blocked on? No hydrogen, because of no water, because the saline water is stuck. Did it not get hooked up? Uh, it did, it's just not getting used. Well, that's also fine, because we really wouldn't want to send saline water away. Because if we were going to get rid of it, we'd want to do it in a salination plant. While we're waiting for that, let's get our second request for plastic in here. And we've got some empty warehouses now. And awesome, we've got one on the same station doing the other plastic bars. So that means one train can feed both warehouses. So the way we would update this is say the amount of plastic bars we want is now negative 1024. So we'll probably see a ton of plastics requests now. And uh, we are completely filled up on the byproducts. That's because they actually don't have anywhere to go. And there's the plastic already. It got unloaded exceptionally fast. Well, this little space right here, being used for these gold science packs, which are the other gold science packs, not the ones we're working on. Uh, we're completely done with those. So that slot is now open. I'm wondering if instead of putting all this stuff on trains, we can just have two temporary machines here just to keep that belt flowing. Well, I am eager to see the science go at full blast at some point <laughs> that every time we upgrade one of these setups, we're finding other things in the factory that are lacking. But this isn't unexpected because when we were planning things, we were noting that certain parts of the factory would be underpowered and that we would just fix them when they came up. So we have another plastics belt. So we'll just give one belt to one and one belt to the other. Okay, we've got our plastic. Now this should be enough. Hopefully we've fixed all of the bottlenecks and now this can run at full blast. Also, we do have a drone road up here. I'm in a little missing part. We can just run this belt up, rather than using robots for this. This is having trouble getting the output at full speed. So let's just move it down here instead. And a lot of those machines are going to need to be seated. But the naphtha is running low again. 
but that's because we need to set this up where saline water goes in, hand salt goes out. So it's going again. And very quickly, this nap the tank is filling up, but that belt is finally filled. Items are getting in there, and we're getting close to our full belt. Of course, research is going to be quickly done, and we're pounding out the plastic. A great deal of that's coming from butane. And man, that's a lot of drones. We're basically maxed out on them again. Some repeatable research we might want to do is just making the drones faster. But we should probably wait until we've upgraded gold science for that. Come on, I want to see all of these green. Well, this slowed down. But that's due to a lack of white circuits. Strangely enough, we're not filling up this warehouse. That's because I used the wrong color wire. But there's probably no point to even putting a limiter on there at all. We would just want it to be completely filled up if possible. Wow, these ones are running short. Looks like from uh, belt speed limitations. Let's see, output of blue science has suddenly stopped. But I've attempted to upgrade these a little bit just in the same style as they were many episodes ago when we made them. But now we're making about 62 a second and our total science setup was calculated around 55. So this technically is enough as long as the circuits don't go anywhere else, but I put a bunch of productivity modules in there and the pollution cloud is bad. <laughs> but it's uh, going to remain this way because it's impossible to tame at this point. It's just nuts. That said, those poor trees are trying so very hard to keep this under control. <laughs> and they're doing an amazing job when you look at the amount of pollution they're capturing. It just needs so many more of them that it's probably not worth doing anything about. As long as we're surviving the biters and the UPS is mostly 60, then it's fine. Definitely the source of slowdowns is from the biter attacks and short of just removing them from the game, there's not much else that can be done. But since we're so close to uh, being done, I don't see the need to do any major changes. I'd rather just put up with the UPS drops until we get to the end, because it's not too bad. But there we go. We are pounding out a lot more circuits. It's not necessarily a full belt, but hopefully it'll be enough. And they did just make it back. So in they go, and science will continue. See, these things seem to be kind of short on oxygen. Ah, this one isn't even hooked up at all. <laughs> so there we go. Have we fixed all of the weak links in here? I'm just always amazed. It, there's so many requests. Well, it's looking good again. It might take a little while to see if this belt can get fully populated. But it also might not be possible if those white circuits are just being used on other things right now. There's only so many of them in the factory. And I would prefer to avoid rebuilding any part of the circuits bus at this point. We certainly could make it many times smaller, but it's also a lot of work. Considering that we are fairly close to the end of the game, I don't really want to be doing any major projects unless we absolutely have to. Well, when this is done, we're going to need to do the gold packs. And this is the two million research, so this is going to be the true test. And we don't really want to go into this until we have researched all of the rocket parts because this is the giant time sink that is going to be 8 million science packs between these two or 8 million researches. It'll be more like uh, 4 million science packs. So we might as well start tossing some more rocket ship parts in here, at least the ones that don't require the military science. So we'll finish up on the fuel cells, we'll do the habitation module, life support system, and these researchers are getting mighty big and the command center. The two that need the military research are the fusion reactor and the protection fields and those are of course the two things that require biter orbs to make. So we kind of want to research these as quickly as possible. At 95% of our research, so how are we doing? There we go. We finally have our solid purple belt of items and then it's also solid of the blue. So if we come up here and see, finally we've got all of the bottlenecks fixed and all of our science packs are full. And that's kind of what we want to see. Each one of these belts should essentially be full like this. 
And some of these labs aren't going because they're missing some of their packs, but that's just because that purple needs to fill up the giant buffer again. Actually getting gold to run smoothly is going to be a difficult task. Potentially it may never happen. Before I can get all those things upgraded, research might complete. Because that's kind of what's happening now. That uh, research is completing faster than the amount of time it takes to work out the bugs of these setups and upgrade the factory to be able to support them. And that kind of goes back to the thing I mentioned earlier when I was saying it would uh, take me longer than 15 hours to make a setup that'll do it in less than 15 hours. Well, that's kind of where we're at now. At some point, you know, things just complete before I could actually fix the builds. And that's fine. It is what it is, basically. Although, with all of these power items running, we're actually have a new record again. 64 gigawatts, because, uh... Both groups of thorium reactors are running, plutonium's running, uranium's running, our one deuterium fuel cell reactor setup is running. <laughs> so oh, I dropped down a bit there, but uh, <laughs> 65 gigawatts and three terajoules of uh, battery storage. And it, it seems like adding these accumulators as close to Bider Island as they are, it is helping smooth out power production here. It's just an obscene amount of accumulators, but it is helping. Like, where's all the power going? Well, I guess the labs are researching really fast because they probably had a big buffer in them because we weren't actually using the gold science prior to this. So it is all being ground through very quickly and then everything's going to get very slow. Pretty much this entire time we've been making gold science. It never stopped. It's just, it doesn't make it very quickly. And we probably have enough of these fuel cells to build a second reactor. So let's keep it going. And now we're just waiting on the deuterium. So let's copy the whole thing. It needs to go somewhere. But also, we kind of need a lot more than we have. So how about we just start from down here and see how many we can get in. Well... That will triple our output, which seems pretty good. But for now, let's let the robots place that because we have researched another spaceship part. We need to make fuel cells. And that's one of the things that is on our list there. That's a lot of rocket fuel, my goodness. So same thing as before, we wanna pull out the fuel cell signal. We're going to need 50 of these and the rest of them are going to be 25s. So let's plop that in there and that is not happening. Even that is kind of a lot because they stack in units of uh, 10. So how about we do that instead? And 895,000 space science packs. Make in the fuel cell. Robot picked it up. I'm delivered there, but <laughs> it just launched. So it's gonna be a little while, but it works like everything else, so it will be properly delivered and building up lots of deuterium gas already. So we'll just uh, bottle it up here. Let's request how about a hundred bottles and how about let's put a hundred bottles into this chest and actually filled up on the deuterium already and there's uh, 2,000 of it in there so this generated it very quickly. So that's kind of why I decided on this type of design here, even though it's not very efficient when it comes to perfect ratios, it is tileable <laughs> and easily allows you to expand production without spending very much time on it. And because we're going to be doing a lot of bottle deliveries here, let's just have this storage chest where empty bottles can be placed if we need them. And there we go. The bottles are going to be coming in here, so we'll also have another location for them just to be dumped. And we'll just request all of the bottles. And we actually have a little bit of gas in there now. So this should uh, expand our production a little bit. Meanwhile though, the other set of reactors are online. And we're making <laughs> a tiny 11 gigawatts now. So it's kind of funny how dramatically it shifts based on the availability of science. And strangely, we are getting no purple at all. And that's because maxed out on sulfur. 
which is odd because only one drone is actually doing it. Uh, it was at less than what it needs to be, greater than. Now it's sending tons and tons of drones to pick up that sulfur. And looking at our SpaceX progress, we have actually launched five of those fuel cells. So progress is being made there and uh, getting mighty close to being done launching rockets for science. And after this stops, basically it's going to get pretty quiet, at least compared to how it has been. <laughs> Once we're done with the space science, that's where the lion's share of the rocket launches went. That clearly we're only going to have a few hundred launches left after we get this thing up to a million. So the amount of rockets is going to be some amount above 2,000 that we made in the end. And that's the end of this episode. On the next one, we are going to work on upgrading our gold science, which is the last thing we need to do in order to finish the faster than light researches. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.